Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ava Novus live stream. Uh, today we're going to be creating a map in one hour. And as you can see by the background and everything else, the theme today is drawing the apocalypse. We've had a couple of requests from a large amount of people to actually draw when everything goes uh, pear-shaped in the world. Um, to get to also start about the late start, we had a minor technical issues. We just got a new mic and upgraded it so let me know if you guys can hear me again we are live we are live streaming on twitch tv facebook and youtube links will be in the comments below in addition to that we'd also like to thank our uh promoter and our new sponsor uh art rage for making this video possible for the software and for kind of taking us under wing and helping us create these maps for you today so let's go ahead and get started like I said before, today we are going to be creating the apocalypse. In order to do that, I'm going to first of all show you the setup for the canvas. This is our current canvas setting. We're at 11 inches wide by 8.5 inches tall. Let me go ahead and one second. Oh, before we get started with that, one more thing I forgot to men mention is we are currently uh, by the time you see this video, we are selling our gigantic map packs on sale. Each map is a 36 inch by 24 inch sized map with printed, with published at a 450 DPI. Uh, usually for posters is about 100 DPI. We thought we'd, you know, up it by 450%. So uh, we're selling it currently on drive through RPG. Go check that out or go to our website at www avantnovus.com check out our different stores we're selling that and again we'd like to thank our sponsor RH for that so let's go ahead and get started and turn off my phone as check check Visual check here check you guys can hear me all right Here we go. Okay. Let me just get, make sure that we are broadcasting and everything's sounding fine. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes for a couple more people to join. All right. We'd also like to pay special attention to our newest member of the Avant Novus team. She's done almost 20 years of technical writing. She's also done a gigantic amount of legal. She's helping us out now. Her name is Jenny, or excuse me, Jen. And Jen, thank you for being now part of the Alvat Novus team. And ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get started with this. Again, our preset here is width of 11 inches, height eight and a half inches. Pixel size is 450 pixels per square inch first of all we're gonna make our we're gonna pull up our reference now since this is the apocalypse I figured the biggest apocalypse that has ever been has been the meteor strikes on earth totally destroying all life on our planet a number of times so let's go ahead and make that today this is a reference image and the first thing we're gonna do is get some colors here off of it Let's go ahead and work on the ocean. As you can see here, I'm selecting various parts of this. There we go. Of this, then I'm going down to my samples tab here and hit an add sample. Hey, look, I want to just add two samples. Come over here, get some dark blue, add sample, and maybe a little, that's a good blue too. All right, again, to do this, you just click on your sample brush here in ArtRage. Go down to our eyedropper right here. Now let's go ahead and get some colors. We have this cool little mountain area right here that I kind of want to snack. It's a little green, but that's okay. We're going to hit that. Let's grab some of this amber. Ooh, that's a nice dark amber. And maybe some greens. If you're joining us on Facebook and Twitch, welcome. If you're seeing this on YouTube, we are publishing this live without any type of editing so you can see all the mistakes and all the horrible things that happen just so you can see how I correct them or see how you want to correct them all right we've got our colors now 
And that snag, maybe this white over here too. And, ooh, that's a good forest color. Okay, let's go ahead and we're gonna hide our reference. Today, we're gonna put this just kind of a, pretty much on a question of where we wanna put this. To start our layout, we are again are going to, let's get a nice blue in there for our, um, for our background. All right, so let's go ahead and add that blue to the bag. You can add the blue there, and then we're going to add another layer to this. And this is where our pretty much our basic map is going to be. But let's go ahead. We've been experimenting with a number of techniques, and this technique we're going to actually be using. Go away, Steam. No one likes you. All right, we're going to be using maybe this, maybe this color. Let's add some amber into it. That color is kind of dark. Just adjusting. We'll not put any metallic in there. And in this layer, we are going to go ahead and use our paintbrush, our paint bucket to fill it. Well, that's not bad. And now we are going to go ahead and get started on making the coast. To do that, we're just going to use our large eraser and let's go ahead and you know just gonna fill this out just for grins we're gonna start right up in this uh let's make sure our hardness is up pressure's up hardness is up we're gonna go right in here and we're just gonna kind of block out exactly actually let's do this a different way as I'm looking at this, I think there's a better way to do this. Okay, we're going to use our actual, our, um, our pen tool. We're going to select our, let's find it. No anti-aliasing pen, and we're going to turn off smoothing on this. We have a nice brown color, double check, yep, there we go. And we are going to start, since we're working with a crater, we're going to actually make the crater first. And let's say we have this nice little, nice little continent right here. But again, I'm just willy-nilly in this. Let's say this, this meteor has taken a gigantic chunk. Let's draw the meteor now. Again, we're going to make kind of, I'm going to draw another, and I don't think I'm liking that. Start with the meter first. Let's plan this out a little bit better. Sorry about the late start. I'm kind of thrown for a loop. So our meteor, let's, let's put our meteor kind of, I don't know, maybe kind of in an area like this. go with that and then our continent can you guys hear me okay still hope so our continent's going to come up here or maybe it's going to be down here oh, it's big things here like this and maybe some additional stuff like here all right so let's go ahead and reduce the opacity of that by 50 percent so we kind of have our guide Come down here, grab our brown color that we just had, and get started on this coast. Well, let's do the meteor first. I'm just going to have these large, let's see in there so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. I'm going to have this large, huge meteor strike. kind of cool little rich thing from that image that we just showed. But again, everything that I've currently planned out so far on this, you guys have seen. Down here. I 
Maybe this is like blasted back. It's kind of fun, right? Maybe get something out by us like this. Maybe this guy has like some huge spillway right like that. And again, it really kind of just let it flow through you. With Art Rage, it just lets you be very intuitive, or it just feel very real. And so some of our friends in Art Rage are down at TwitchCon. I'd like to say hi guys and hope you're doing very well today. Again, some more. Let's just fix that. Some more blown out stuff here. Maybe some blown out stuff here. Right. Maybe in here we have this a smaller little crag. We'll have to look at this. I don't know if I like it. But maybe this is the tops of the mountains where the meteor hit and the concept for this is we're going to design this image first don't want it a hundred percent round because that would signify that the meteor actually hit the earth straight on maybe it was deflected a little bit let's have a look at that it's not too bad it's not too bad let's go ahead and Add some more textures and more little fine things over here. There we go. Let me know if the music is too loud, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just pop that down there. Some other stuff. All right, not too bad. We might come and refine this or like carve it out a little bit more just to make it so it looks like something very bad has happened. And I think the plan for this is we're gonna start kind of a gradient. We're gonna make a, we're gonna start another little continent here and this is kind of some massive blowback. Maybe the, the uh, after the comet hit, you know, the ocean just kind of caved in and came in here and just ripped this area apart. Too bad. Let's come down here. We're actually going to come up here and meet these together. That's cool. Let's keep going here. One second, I need to check something. So it is working again. Yes, okay, sweet, good. Things are going really well there. All right, now we're back up here, and again, this area is just torn apart. Let's say this is about, I don't know, a couple hundred years after the destruction of everything. I've seen a lot of uh, maps based on natural disasters and stuff like that. They're set like couple hundred years later and things are still like broken which is cool but like they have no flora and fauna they say the earth's just recovering in all reality it just takes a few years to get green back depending on where you're at again we're just kind of following our planning here very tortured landscape. Also, a little later, probably next week, we will be doing a much slower version of a tutorial uh, with Art Rage. Speaking of Art Rage, if you guys, if this, if you're watching this video, and it's between the 26th of October to October itself, Art Rage is now 40% uh, off. I highly recommend, if you're looking to get Art Rage, 
you go and grab that at artrage.com. It's a very, very inexpensive price. It's ridiculously cheaper than anything else out there for what this offers. You can pretty much do anything you can with drawing on Photoshop, plus you get real dynamic. It actually simulates exactly what the brushes and how paint interacts with each other. It's one of the reasons we use ArtRage. They are our sponsor. However, we we chose them before they chose us. All right, we've got we've got kind of a good start there. Let's take off a reference, and I'm actually going to come up here. I'm not really too happy. We're going to take a lot more time on this map's layout. I'm going to make this a little more circular by adding some mass to it. Kind of like these broken away little forks here. Don't want it to seem too man made. All right. If you're watching this on YouTube, we have a lot of different videos. They're all free. Go ahead and check that out. We also have videos up on our website on avantnovus.com. Check that out too. We also have some map making resources, markers, previews, other things like that. that all right should that last one we didn't need that. so let's go ahead and fill this in now to do that we're going to go ahead and click on our uh, on our paint bucket we're going to reduce the spread to about 25 percent on our presets we're going to gap protection fill again move the spread to we're not going to anti-alias. Gap tolerance is going to be about 17 pixels. We're just going to slap that right there and just start filling these in. This takes a little bit of time because our rage is finding any holes we missed. See right here? Let's see if this works. Have a gigantic hole right there. Yes. I don't know if I like this mustard color for the land. Like a really dark, spicy mustard. We're just going to fill those in really quick. Top of this, we are now on the... We reactivated our cartography, Cartographer's Guild account. We're posting some of these maps up there. Go ahead and check them out. Huge, large listing of people on that website. We've currently also got our products up at Drive Through RPG. Okay, we got a big gap right here. Let's see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing right there. See? So I don't have to spend the next hour trying to find the little pixel that wasn't associated with that. I'm just going to clean up these areas too. What we're doing right now is creating just the very background for the map. We're in a few moments we're going to go in and add paint mass. RH not only um, tracks the colors, the effects, the, it actually has a live lighting system, meaning everything I put on this here is updated using that uh, lighting. And on top of that, it also tracks exactly how much paint is on one given spot. If I put a giant smash of like chalk or glitter on there, it's going to remember how much glitter I put there. Um, and we're going to use that in this technique to build up land masses. And the more paint we add into it, the higher it gets. Have to be a little bit careful because it can get way out of control. See that big gap right there? Yeah, see, not a problem. I 
and all the settings I'm using today are just the default settings from ArtRage. They just come with the program. You can do a lot of custom brushes. You can do a lot of custom this and that. Probably going to do a tutorial on all those little features too. Let's go ahead and uh, for these little guys, we're just going to go in and fill them up ourselves and save some time. Sure, everything is clean there. Getting these. All right. Not too shabby this time around. Not too shabby. We're going to do something different. Usually, we'd add the mountains and we'd add all the other little things, but we're going to actually do rivers right now. This is a little bit of a, a technique change for us, but with this map, your rivers are actually going to be your most defining character. On where things are. To do this, I'm going to go back with our uh, with our pen here, and I actually have a preset. This is a river brush. What we're making use of is right here is the taper taper length and this taper bias. Okay, what this is going to let me do. Let me zoom in here so you can see exactly how this looks. If you notice that every time I put something down, I'm getting a little tail there with it with rivers and anything else like that it is allowing me to create some really nasty uh, natural looking rivers I'm turn this down a little bit yeah let's turn it down a little bit more and the technique I'm gonna use is I'm gonna put it down uh, on a different layer a lot of colors I'm gonna then select those colors and using that selection I am going to create the other where the, these rivers go all right now since this is a very important step I'm going to kind of take my time here I'm not going to hustle I'm not going to rush this so once we have this down, we will be able to get the mountains down quite quickly. Now these areas here, especially kind of far away, we're going to actually start in the middle here, come over, we're going to start our rivers kind of being a, maybe a drain on drain off section of this large crater so we're going to kind of point them in the middle of the crater as such and just keep on doing that till we're done hope everybody yeah we're, we're broadcasting this video in October so I hope everybody's having fun preparing for Halloween That is a great question. The reason we did the apocalypse, the apocalypse, apocalypse map is because, uh, well, we thought it was kind of fitting for this season. I mean, what's more scary than the end of the world? Of course, nowadays with all that's going on, we're all all wondering exactly what the time frame is on the end of the world with all the crazy shenanigans. leader for where I live once said that you know plan for the end of the world today but plant cherry trees or apple trees or some kind of type of trees just kind of signify exactly you know plan ahead don't don't fret it too much I mean really not much you can do if there is an end of the world okay down on the this area of the map we're going to be creating a ton of rivers and places where the ocean overflew overflowed and got everything a might big soggy and again with my brush and the taper bias the taper bias shows us exactly which direction that taper is going, going to go let's go ahead and look at that really quick once again okay if I have the taper bias over on this side at 100% I start right here 
I go there and the bias is there. If I do the taper bias right here, I start here and go, and the taper bias is at the end of the drawn line. We're going to keep the taper type per bias here for now, just because. And I'm just doing a lot of squiggly lines. Nothing really complex. You might even go in on these uh, islands out here and with a larger brush and kind of cut them up a little bit better because that'd be cool. And this is our series that we do a map in an hour. Kind of a challenge. It usually gets down to the last couple seconds. But we're going to try and reduce that time by just spending the necessary time at the very front. Of the project we're doing and making sure we get all the elements first so we don't have to go back and fix. I would like to thank uh, YouTube for providing the music today. This uh, set list is from their free music channel. We really appreciate that. They made that available. Go to YouTube and find all those things for your channel. We're a big firm believer in copyright. The honoring uh, artists' ability to retain the on the permission of where their art goes. So it's pretty cool of YouTube to do that. So if people can add music in their videos and sound effects. All right, I think we're almost done with this. Now, I, I'm looking at this map and I'm thinking that with this new topography that was created due to the meteor hitting. I'm going to get a lot of weird ranged mountains here. It's really cracked the earth and destroyed some stuff. So we're going to go back in our guidelines here in a second. Actually, let's cut these. We're going to do a little bit more of these little scraggies on here. I am overlapping. I'll show you why I'm doing that here in a second. Okay, let's go ahead and increase our brush size to about 20. We're going to start right in the middle, and I'm just going to start right here at the epicenter. I'm just going to draw a big old line, and it is just going to bisect this island like that. Maybe another line like this. You know, sky's limit, guys. I can you can pretty much do anything you want with your own map. So the reason I'm doing this from a central point is we get the actual effect that the Earth has been cut. This area's been cracked open. This is kind of, we're going to use this kind of as a giant stamp or stencil. Maybe it's a better way to say we're preparing a stencil right here. All right, let's go ahead to the next part of this. This next part, we've got a pretty good flow and pattern right here. Actually, now that I look at it, I see something we could add. Down on this map over on this side of the farm, we don't have some irrigation. So let's go ahead and create a lot smaller, some additional rivers and some other stuff that we might have just a continental divide here. Again, we haven't tried this before. We're just kind of doing it on this map for grins. But we're making our rivers our entire layout first. Okay, we're going to lock this tra this transparency level layer. We're going to go ahead and get rid of the ocean too. And then I'm going to show you. We're going to select our locked layer here. We're going to go hit our selection tool. That's this data tool. We're going to hit current layer only. We're actually going to turn. Then we're going to select on the white part of this. Once we have that selected, we're going to go ahead and come up to edit and control shift I or invert selection. Now that we've got selected, we're going to open our land map, hide that template we just made, come down here, make sure that our 
layer lock is on. Come down here and just hit delete. Hit control D to unselect everything and we've got a very cool river system already located here. All right, let's go ahead and lock this layer. Let's bring this layer in. Our blue so we can kind of see stuff. Not bad, I'm, I'm really digging that. All right, these mountains, however, need some help. And we'll get, we'll get back to, and let's do these, let's do these mountains now. I mean, these little islands. Really should have paid a lot more attention to them, but that's fine. Okay, we're here. We're gonna come in and just break these apart with our little technique we just developed. Again, we're pretty much making our own little customized stencil. We're focusing on getting these lines over to these small islands. Maybe let's say there's been some really nasty you know, global warming and then the subsequent horrific global cooling. So we're going to make this a little bit colder than usual. Maybe even an Arctic or subarctic map. I don't see that every day, right? There's a reason for that. Because painting ice and snow is extremely difficult. For me anyways, maybe maybe for you it's really easy. Okay, same process. We hide these two layers. We go up to this image. I select the image. Go to edit. Invert selection, control shift I. Come down here, open this layer up, unlock this layer. Hit delete. I guess there's something up there. Let's have a look. Yeah, I see something. In there, edit, control, shift, I. I want to see, I want to show it to you where it is in the menu. That's kind of weird. There we go. I've been hitting a deselect layer. Go TD. All right. Unselect that. That looks a lot better. Awesome. Let's go ahead and let's start working on our bottom layer and our textures here. Now, in Art Rage, like I said, we are going to be putting down a lot of different colors. We're going to be putting down a lot of different paint. To do this first, we're going to start with our giant tube O paint. Here's our presets we're using. We're using a hard squeeze of 500%. So roughly 4,000 pixels, and we are applying all the things, excuse me, uh, 2,000 pixels. We are going to start applying there, and this time with this, we're just going to come right from the middle here. I'm using my mouse for this because I'm going to get the same textures, and I'm just going to pull this paint from the middle out. You can already see the lighting, the... Uh, in system lighting effect from Art Rage kicking in. It's doing all the things here. It's going to create some really cool ridges. You kind of want those ridges for this. Okay. Using my tube tool and starting in the middle of the crater and just working outside of this. I also try a different technique today just for the heck of it. Up here we're actually going to end these two. Do you see that little peak there? It's going to be the start of our mountains up in that corner. Maybe over here too. Alright. Not too shabby. Let's keep going with this. Same technique. Same everything we're doing here. Awesome. Okay. 
our next step is we're actually going to now start on our mountains. Mountains are going to be a slightly, let's make them kind of a grayish color this time around. We're going to actually add metallic to them this time as well. Let's put about 20%, add our color. It's a little dark, so let's go ahead and grab some. Okay, that's not bad. Let's add that color. All right, for our mountains, we are going to come in and we have this up here. I'm going to plan this out a little bit before we go in. Our mountains are going to be, I guess they're not what I wanted, probably in this radius of the blast. Then we're going to get a secondary ridge of mountains right through there. And then we're going to have these mountains go there, there before. So we're going to plan that out and we're now going to go back into our bottom layer. We're going to grab Yield Tube Brush. We're going to turn this down to 250. We're going to come into the map and where these lines are, we are definitely not going to do that color. We're going to place our mountains. They're going to be blown back to here. And we're just going to throw these on and yeah, we might have a little rivers, but that's going to be the, it's going to be the fun of this project. Then maybe right here we have the old mountains. And again, this is not exactly where our mountains, the size of our mountains, this is where the mountains. We're just adding mass so that art range, we can add additional mass onto this a little later. This is our first step, our, our first big layer. Again, I'm just, let's just make that. I'm using my mouse right now, so it's kind of a consistent layer. You can hear it clicking away in the background there. There we go. Let's move a little closer so you can actually hear me. All right. We're gonna make our other mounds here. It's gonna be kind of our blast radius. And again, a large, gigantic area of mounds right here on these islands. All right. Now we got that done. Let's go ahead and we're going to start working on refining our texture. To do that, we're going to go use our blur tool. We're going to get easy dirt. We're going to go up to, let's go 250. We're going to turn the glitter size up pretty hard, pressure up. Then we are going to come down here and we are just going to pull. Now let's go with that earlier color. We're just going to do the same thing we did. It covers mountains, that's fine. We're just going to pull and add this texture going from the center up. If you notice, we already have, using that striations we did with the big tube, we've got this wonderful little texture. And it looks like the ground has just been, you know, you have mountains ripping across the earth and tearing up chunks and bits of everything in their path. And this tool right here is we're going, we're using it to add a additional mass to this. The glitter tool adds a lot of paint and a lot of area quite quickly with Art Rage. And I found it just perfect for doing this kind of things. But again, we're, we really want this kind of weird like glacial lines that have ripped up pretty much everything in their uncle. Um, I've been doing this for about, well, since I was eight, <laughs> made my f first couple of maps since I was eight, and it's just been kind of a project since then. And I discovered Art Rage a little while ago, not too long ago, about four or five years. It's like version three or four or something like that. All right. Okay. What we're going to do next is we're going to define our texture here. We're going to go down to our instant blur tool, drop it to about 13%. 
increase this to about, I don't know, 250%. That seems to be our happy number with this size of canvas. And we are going to grab our pen. We're going to start little swirls, if you guys can see that. What's that? What that is doing, it's smoothing out the texture and also really giving rise to a lot of the fun shapes underneath. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because we're actually going to add another series of textures. I'm going to add the mountains now. So we go to our two presets. We're going to grab our sparse squares, go into our settings for that, pressure all the way up, letter size all the way up, and we're going to put this at about 25. We're going to come down here, and now we're going to follow these coasts. Let's get a little darker paint in there. Follow the mountain coasts. Just these huge, craggly mountains everywhere. Now, like I said before, usually our mounds would be a very big indication of where the texture is going to go. However, it's all about the rivers this time. It's all about where those rivers are flowing. Right now, this looks like a giant mess on screen, and I apologize, but it'll make sense here in a second. We're just adding just random broken up mountains. You have a crack, uh, a crack plate tectonics here. So you're going to have mountains going all the which way and whatnots and over here and down here and a bunch of other crazy stuff. Another one here, another one here. But our rivers are really going to define where these mountains are and what they're doing and how they look. Now this mountain range up here we are going to spend some more time with just because this was an original mountain range before the the comet hit and all heck broke loose. Now we're back down here. Back down here. And again, I have just I'm just splattering huge amounts of paint on my canvas. Then with our little spatula tool, also known as the knife tool. We're going to go in and we're going to carve out the rest of this map. Alright, just bust this out. We only got about 15 minutes left. Actually, a little longer. We didn't start till pretty late. Just making a round bit of circle here. Where this is, I'm gonna make another to make some more circles. Just adding mass. Again, this doesn't have to look pretty because we are gonna be carving this out here in a few. Alright, that looks good. Go ahead and go back to our, our knife tool to our instant blur. Gonna bop this up to about 250 again, reduce the pressure to about just slightly under 10 on both sides. Now we zoom in on this mountain when we come in. We're gonna push, and you can actually see we're getting a three-dimensional, just like that, a three-dimensional line of mountains with peaks, valleys, and everything else. And again, we will be carving this out. It's gonna look fabulous. We're just focusing on added mass to the paint. Usually with this paints, it's like 45 minutes of adding mass and texture, then 15 to five minutes of just painting. I'd love to find another program. <laughs> I'd love to see another program try to do that, but Art Rage is definitely really an amazing map. It also allows us to do gigantic maps. Usually the maps that we do in it are 36 inches by 24 inches and with 450 dpi. Okay, 
We've kind of got that done. Let's go ahead and start our carving. We're going to go in here and we're going to use Harsh Chaos. Actually, let's use Hard, hard Wet Blend. Get about 100. Okay, there it's going to be good. Before we do that, we're going to go in and we're going to color our canvas. Turn the opacity down to zero. Get a nice greenish. Green amber looking color there. That works. Okay. Let's go ahead in with our. Let me check. And let's go back to Harsh Chaos. 250. And to do this, we are just going to. Uh, let's go about 100, 150. And 175. We're going to take our brush here and we're just going to run it all the way up these rivers as such and you can see right there we've already gotten our first textured mountain just like that maybe a little bit bigger 200 I'm going to start on our big rivers first, and we're just going to use our mouse to get consistent pressure. We're just going to drag it here, drag it here. I'm just going to go along from there and see, we got mountains. It's that easy. Because we spent all our time prepping the canvas. These mountains here that are actually with no rivers, I'm just going to come in, kind of go to the side of them. Spend some time. I'm going to take our time on these. See the canvas coming through? That's from our canvas settings. Let me just zip these down a little bit so you can see exactly what I'm doing. There we go. Again, I'm drawing this just with my mouse. This is no stylus. No fancy dancy stuff. I'm getting this really cool blown back image. Of course, we can come in and fix up these. We'll go in and smooth these down a little bit, these mountains. Because that looks a lot better once we do that. All right, then we're back here. Yes, our maps that we are selling on drive through RPG are that size and resolution. They are gigantic, about 50 gigs. Excuse me, 50 meg. They come in four styles. It's with a DPI of 450. We found that the best way to get something that big, usually on if I'm if I'm using ArtRage, my file size usually hits about you know a couple gig on those. So we convert them to a PDF. By making them to PDF, it really shrinks it down and. We expect people to customize those, use their, you know, for home use. Also, if they want to use it for something else, definitely give us a call, because we are generally really easy people to work with. All right. Again, just repeating the same pattern. Nice, quiet, and easy. I'm not even looking at the clock. I looked at the clock, now 10 minutes. <laughs> Again, just following these rivers. Some of the mounds, if they look really too much scraggly, we'll go ahead and fix them a little bit later. But again, all I'm doing is following these down. really kind of define this well. I'm keeping the center of the mouse with the cursor inside yes I'm using the mouse um, inside the little streams because I want the pressure on this to be uniform. 
Now when we smooth these out, that's going to be a different story. I will use the stylus. Then we're going to come from the center of this and pull out. There we go. Same things here, same things here. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of our reference really quick. Because that's now kind of messing us up. All right, guys. Not too bad. I'm just going to draw some of these mountains a little bit. There we go. Let's bring our, let's bring our ocean back in. Looking good. All right, got a few more minutes left. All right, let's go ahead and start working on enhancing these mounds. We're going to go back to instant blur. We're going to go at 150 on this one right now, then we're going to move these down under 10%. And we're going to take our stylus and on our mounds here, we're just going to focus that blurring. So we get that. We now have mountain peaks. And again, we are just focusing our stylus on the mountain areas. If you notice that the areas I go over, they become a lot brighter. The shadows become a lot darker. It just really enhances how things look. Kind of gets rid of some detail, however, the size of mountains, it's all about the shape and how the light plays off of it. Hope everybody's doing good and staying healthy. The cold has just murdered our house. And also some of our people we work with that I don't know this. All right, guys. We've got the basic texture done here. Let's go ahead and start coloring. This area that we're going to go in, we're going to kind of make it a little deforested. Just a touch. We're going to bring our samples back in. And we are going to start with maybe a darker brown on them. Now let's go maybe dark gray. I'm going to go to our airbrush. Dial it down. Use our stylus. Let's bump this up to about, I don't know, 75. Uh, maybe 175. And we're going to start on these mountains. And I always start low and then increase it. Yeah, there we go. Just give it a hint of these mountains that are different hardness than the land around them. So it's going to work to highlight those. Just got our start time. So we're going to go to 305 Pacific. Excuse me, 205 Pacific. 305 Mountain is our deadline to get this done. These maps will be available. We don't know exactly what. We haven't, we've talked about it. We just might throw up in our bundle for a couple bucks. Check out our website again. Shameless plug for my stuff. Now that we got those mountains, we're going to hit these two. We're now going to go in and start working on our ground cover. Okay, to do that, we're going to start probably up here. We're just going to very lightly run our brush across the ground. Again, with an airbrush, it behaves just like an airbrush in real life. So it's about layering and it's about flow and controlled. As you can see, we're just busting this out. We've about 10 minutes left in the stream. Right. Well, it's a force to do. Not much force in this one, I'm thinking. 
If there is, they're on the other sides of the mountains. They're probably dying because they're not getting any of the rain from the huge rain shadows that are forming. We might just do a couple here. Our next map pack, we're probably going to do kind of in this theme. We're going to have one image of the land or the role playing scenario. And then the other image with, that comes with it is going to be a totally decimated landform. That something really bad has happened canyons, rifts, anything like that. I'm going to increase the size of this to about 200 and up the capacity. Because we're going to start using the same color. We're going to start stacking it near where the water is, as that, and just drying it up into these river valleys. Again, just like a regular airbrush, layers and layers and flow. Depends on the asteroid. Usually, asteroids don't have radiation. Some might, some might not. Again, when you're working with fantasy or any type of image or any type of things like that, it's all about your imagination. Okay, get a little better there. Let's go with a little darker green. We're just going to use the same color as a reference. I have to sample. Oh, that's a little much. Let's turn down the opacity on that about 39. Gonna hit the edges of these. We got some grow back. And this is our undercoat. We're gonna move into highlights here in a second. Because all our shadows are already taken care of by Art Rage. There's no way in heck I could do this this fast with anything else. I have had experience with oil paints. I've done a lot of oil painting, a lot of temper painting, way too much acrylic painting. All right, let's come in here and we're gonna choose this kind of this whitish color. And these highlighted areas, these highland areas, we're gonna drop this down to about, yeah, 100 is good, 100 is really good actually. We're just gonna highlight these areas here. Well, you know, kind of staying away from the mountains, but make it very lightly this color is going to blind out anything else. We're just highlighting hills. We have a metallic in there, so it's picking up everything else. Actually, I'm really hitting that color. <laughs> Let's go with that deep amber. Maybe something like that. Let's go ahead and see how that looks. Uh, I think we got a winner there. We definitely have a winner. We'll go with that instead. And again, we're just focusing on in between the rivers and in the highlands of the mountains. Just putting color anywhere I want. Or anywhere I feel like it. Let us know how our new mic is. Let us know if you can hear better, if the quality is better. Actually, really using this brush to light up areas. Get little circles. And on these areas, I'm just going to go regular airbrush and pull the colors up and into it. It's not too bad. Okay, let's do some forests. To do the forest in Ava Novus, we're going to, of course, open a new panel. We're going to go into our sticker spray. We have a very fun one we prefer with. We're going to use a different one today. We're going to use Mossy. We're gonna make this a really garish, I don't know, red color. And on this side of the farm, we're going to, actually let's 
the last two, I'm going to turn off the shadows. Back in about 150. And using our mouse, we're just going to control exactly where all these are. The whole look at this is based on if I if I'm a, you know if I'm in a fantasy and can like ride eagles and scry on the world or whatnot. I'm going and we're gonna add these little trees on here. I'm going to this is kind of the world I'm gonna see. Instead of making your traditional fantasy map, this is probably how I see the world and how I'm gonna create it. There we go, a little rain shadow there. Maybe we have a gigantic forest up here. Maybe one down here. All right. Now that we got our forest done, we're going to repeat the same process we've used before. We're going to click on this area right here. We're going to get our selection tool. Click on stuff not fold paint. Go back to this. Go back to our forest. Hit delete. And we're going to lock the transparency. As you can see. We now have a nice crisp edge on forests. We're then going to go back to yield. Actually, I want to try something different. Usually, we'd use our glitter tool, but today I'm going to use. Yeah, we're going to go glitter on this. It was worth a shot. I might get an effect I wanted. We're going to come here and we're just going to apply the forests. A little growth, not too much though. So we're going to do this first, and then we're going to mess with the opacity of this layer. Got about two minutes left in the stream. We're going to try to finish up the oceans. And we're getting instant forests there. Now for a place that's been hit by apocalypse, those are really a lot of forest. So we are going to reduce the size of those with the opacity. Is it kind of coming up? Last red. Going to go up and hit the opacity filter. We're going to drop that down. Let's say by 60%. Let's drop that down even more. Maybe to 40%. There we go. So it's just little tiny, little tiny things. Maybe update that a little bit. Let's go ahead and go back into this layer down here. Add another layer. Get our airbrush, kick this sucker up into 250, grab one of these lighter colors. We're just going to come in, let's actually bump this up to 350. And we're just going to do circular airbrush movements on everything behind this. And what this is going to do, it's going to really enhance the difference between the land and also the seas and stuff like that. And that texture, that printed, that outline texture is what we're really going for. It's going to draw the eye up and down the coasts. I'm not going to use a blur filter. I'm actually going to use Harsh Chaos to help blend this. Yes, you can import any filter from like GIMP or from, well, the main one's Photoshop. My, my filters and our rage I, I get directly from Photoshop. So all props to them. Maybe some more. There we go, we're kicking with gas. We got a minute left. So we're gonna go back to Harsh Chaos. We're gonna come down here. It's actually got a hard, uh, hard wet blend. I've been experimenting with this. It's been 350. We're just going to go over the edges of these islands. That's giving us kind of this nice watery effect. And again, we're just hustling and getting this done. The second that clock hits 306, we're going to stop. Since so I have some little bit more time, we're going to go do some more of the rivers up in this area. Yeah, fix that little mistake right there with the hard, hard work blend. It is 3.06, ladies and gentlemen, and we are done with the Apocalypse map. Not too shabby, guys. Not too shabby. What I'd like to go do, I'll probably finish this up a little bit later. 
just a, you know a few more things but this is what we've been able to do in a full hour we'd like to thank everyone for coming out for a stream uh, this is where we got in an hour but we're going to go ahead and kind of finish this map up a little bit more i want to show you a couple other tricks tool size on this we're going to actually now make draw attention to the mountains by adding a little bit of snow rifts stuff like that to do that i'm just going back with my airbrush and on the top of these let's up our opacity to high gonna make sure we have the correct layer hit and we're just going to hit the peaks of these mounds with white Actually, I'm going to admit something to you guys. The driver for my stylus stopped working earlier. So I've been having to navigate between my stylus and my mouse to move stuff around. The nice thing about it is you just click and drag. some really cool metal effect there the white I, I don't know what it is I think it just draws the eyes to the top of the mountains it's that contrast of light and shadow that is taking care of all these things but we're getting a really cool contrast there we go because it's these little touches and I'm just dragging the brush just over these ridge areas and it's just leaving the leaving the trail there. Uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesday streams are going to be a little bit different. We're going to really go into the maps that we make, and we're going to take our time. We've had a lot of wonderful requests from people to see exactly what tools we're using, how we're applying them, how we're making that. So we're going to go with a lot, a lot less chaotic streams. We're going to take our time, maybe do. It's not going to be a map in an hour, but it's going to just be using Art Rage to create natural tutorial, you know, a tutorial to create natural landforms. All right, that's looking better. That's looking better. I think that we need to work on, and again, I'm taking, I'm taking some extra time on this. But we're going to, in just the, you know, that's already 10 minutes of work, well, five minutes of work, and it's actually doing a lot better. So let's go in here, and I'm not 100% happy with this, this little back we've done. So I'm going to come in here, and I am currently scrubbing this down with the mouse. So I want direct pressure everywhere. Same consistent pressure. I'm just going over these areas like this. Just applying paint to everywhere, just on these coastlines. Maybe these little coastlines, these little baby coastlines too. We're going to come in with our some blend tools and we're going to blend this in. I think we need a lot more contrast with this map. Yes, that was my alarm to say the map is I need to be off, but I am going to ignore that for now. All right, so we're going to go in 350. Let's experiment with this. Maybe this hard out smudge. Yeah, let's go with let's go with that hard wet hard wet blend. I haven't used this too much, and I'm kind of want to see what happens. So I'm approaching this like the mountain, because that nice star slash natural chitter into it. And I'm going to come in and blur all this up, just with the blur knife. Looks like I forgot to do this entire island right here. Oopsie! Okay, we're back here.
Yes, we have our first. We have an employer. Her name is Jenny, Jen, and we are very lucky to have her with us. We totally lucked out. Now that we've done that, we're just going to follow this more around. Maybe pull some color. And again, at this point, I'm really just kind of experimenting. Let's go with Harsh Chaos at 250. I'm just going to make circular movements. That's actually a really nice blend between the two. Okay, the nice thing about our age, it lets you experiment. It lets you kind of do stuff you haven't before. And you don't need to be afraid of that. It's one of the best things about digital painting. Alright, let's go ahead and blur that now. Instant blur, we're going to do about 250. Again, circular motions. See how nice that is? Yeah, that's nice. We're going to slow with this. Make sure we get all the little spots. Oh yeah, I'm digging that. I'm really digging that. There we go. So I'm hit, as I'm over here, over here muttering, I need a little more head amp on that mic. It's known as volume. Well, technically head amps, how much? how much input you're giving into your signal. It's actually really turning out well. Oceans are a pain. Because a lot of times they make up a good portion of every map and you really just want to nail that for contrast sake. And just kind of experimenting, see what see what we can get out of this. I just spent days on this one though. Not too bad. Let's go in and I think we need a little bit more green down here in this area. Instead of um, we are going to go with maybe a blotchy thing with this with our airbrush. Not there, but actually on this map. Ooh, look at that. Just gonna back that off a little bit. Maybe increase the size of this to 300. And pressure, yeah, pressure's still up. Capacity's still up. Got a lot of drip. Get a little darker on that. That could be a fun way to do trays and stuff. Got some really good ideas here, folks. It's a little too much, though, so we're going to... Just a couple of little, you know, dots. You can hear my mouse going. Again, uniform and control. One point of pressure. It's looking pretty good. I like that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Dan. This has been Dan with Alvin Novus. I hope you liked our little apocalypse on paper. Um, there's a lot. Of, I'm going to develop this technique. We'll be back to this. I think we can get better, and I think we can really make this pop. We we've been experimenting a great deal on this. We've been working. We've been basically turning our technique upside down and backwards. We've continued to use that uh, taper tool that we've worked out, and that's turning out very well. I want to be looking at doing. I really want to get into the oceans next time and play around with that. This generally has just been a very experimental stream. 
but I think we've done a very well done job on this. Again, quick plug for our products. We are offering five island map, uh, five map packs. Each one comes with four different styles, an antique, a totally clear one with markers and a highly stylized map, and also an atlas. They're five bucks to drive through RPG. Hopefully when you see this video, we'll have it on Nook, we'll have it on Kindle, we'll have it on Panzo Publishing and wherever stuff like this is sold. Thank you again so much for coming. Uh, again, Art Rage, 40% off. Go get it. Please, please, please go get it, go get it, go get it, go get it. You want to get it. You can do this stuff again, map in, a, map in an hour, a little touch up and you're good to go. Thanks so much for coming and have a great day.